who had the idea for this? It was Wally. It was and what, what, what caused it? How, how, how I began a painting, and as the painting began to develop, I began to get nervous that I would not get to show it and have, have it have any effect. So I started looking around town, talking to people around town to, to see if anyone had heard of anyone locally doing a show on the war. And um, uh, nobody had. And um, I finally got around to Leslie. I asked her if she knew of anything. And she said, what a great idea. Why don't we do one? And uh, which sort of threw me for a loop. <laughs> it was sort of like Mickey Rooney and uh, <laughs> Judy Garland, let's put on a show. Yeah, there you go. Um, and, it, and it began to develop from there. We went and talked to um, um, uh, Ralph at uh, Cats and Dogs and uh, set a date and uh, began putting out notices, uh, calls for entries. And how, how, how extensive was that, the call of entries? The call for entries went to, uh, well, actually all four coasts, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we hit the East Coast with Art New England. We hit the West Coast with uh, was it Art, Art Week. Week. Uh, we hit Minneapolis with art papers, art, and there's art another papers. art papers somewhere else. I don't know if that or not. But somehow there's an art papers out of Georgia. Okay, well, so we, we hit getting, Florida yeah. and Georgia and yeah. the South. Now, were there any type of restrictions? Were you looking for a particular concentration or focus in the work, or was there really uh, kind of open entry? Were you looking for a certain type of thrust in the work? Well, Wally, I, I think early on, um, we both have our political groundings. And, and Wally, after talking, uh, suggested that we should keep it pretty open-ended so that we got um, a good representation of, of just the different responses to the war. We wanted it to be an artist's response to the war. And so it was his idea to call it Heroes and Victims, which I think is a pretty good gives you a pretty good idea that we're accepting things that go either way, any way, any response. Um, I, I think we, we wanted it to be, we felt there was, there was a, lot of, a lot of kind of censorship and toning of people's responses during the war, and we wanted finally for somebody to have a chance to speak their mind without being cut off. And um, in, this, in that sense, uh, you know, if, if the work is solid as art, we don't care what stance the piece takes. What are going to be the guidelines for choosing the works for the show? Oh, we know that one. <laughs> purely, purely aesthetic, I think. Purely, um, we're both artists, and we want a show that really um, talks about what art is and, and the process and the content. And the content's very important to both of us in our work. So we want work that, you know, makes a strong statement that, that talks to, to us and hopefully the viewers and and work that is pictorially lyrical that, that holds together um, as a visual image. I think that's real important. I'm I'm estimating we had probably close to all in all close to five hundred, I think, um, requests for prospectuses. Yeah probably won't get submissions from all of them, and we'll probably get submissions from people who didn't request a prospectus. Right. So I would guesstimate from just looking at what I've seen here that we may have as many as 300 submissions, um, which isn't too bad. That's not bad. Yeah, and I, I especially like that it, uh, it's from all over the country. Yeah. yeah, from every corner of the country, Alaska, Florida, uh, San Diego, Maine, Got some things I believe from uh, Canada. Um, None from Europe. Well, no, nope. we've we got some European really. artists who are living in New York right at the moment. Right. I like uh, I like those especially. Yeah, they look really frail and fragmented, and but they're stuck together with tar, yeah. which I think is a is a good comment. Like, uh, these to me almost look like um, this Mexican straw. I've got a couple of them over there. Yeah. This Mexican straw figures, like yeah. fertility goddesses mm -hmm. and, and the harvest, mm -hmm. you know, those sort of icons. So there's something about them that I... Uh, well, there's, there's also a real immediacy because we saw images like that on television right. while uh, the 
whole thing was going on, which intrigues me. Do you remember years ago how, um, what was it called? What was it called? Pin, pin dot photographs where people actually punctured prints hmm. in, in patterns? No. Pinhole, pinhole photographs. Unbelievable. That it looks like I don't think it might be I might be wrong, but it looks like pinhole photographs. And and so the pinholes operate sort of as just this other layer mm -hmm. of visual information that gives it sort of this wonderful like surface quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well that Real has the strange. same. Effect. Doesn't it yeah. look like pinhole? Yeah. But it's I mean it's I've only seen a few people do that. I mean it wasn't It looks like it's it's she says it's cast paper. So maybe it's just and I and I and I think there's this screening as yeah, sort see, of an, an understructure, and I, I think in that. places it's just letting light through. It's really funny because I never read what the materials are. I just try to like try respond to, to yeah. I try to, I, I'm stubborn that way. It's like oh, this I, looks I like. I like those. I'd like to see those up as well. Yeah. If you make it starting early enough, people will come for cocktails after work on their way home. I think six o'clock is fine. I think mean, that's fine too, because once people go home, they're entrenched. They're home. They're home. It's Friday night. Now, one nice thing is there are no high school games on Friday night. At, at that time. At of that time of the year. Okay. So Six to nine. You can say six to nine. You have people who will hang on, and people who will just come for a while yeah. and then go. Uh, now, if you want to make it interesting, mm -hmm. you have the opening on Friday night, mm -hmm. and you have a continuous show on Saturday night. What do you mean? In other words, you open again videos. Saturday night. Okay. So that what yeah. happens is you have a, a, a theater. Friday night, they get in. you get some people who are interested. And then Saturday, you get the word of mouth people who didn't get it Friday night. Okay, so we could maybe have one night of focus on performance. Maybe the Friday night just more the social thing, people milling around. The Saturday night performance. I think or you the get performance book. Good. Okay. Uh, and we, I think we have a lot of really good performance artists here in town that we can draw on. This show on heroes and victims talks about a lot of issues that I think all of us are confused about. As yeah. we discussed earlier, I'm still very confused about this war. And I'm an opinionated guy. And I have no idea what my opinion is on this yeah. thing. I mean, it really is difficult for me uh, to say how I feel, because I, I feel so torn about it. And I think the vast majority of people in this country have very mixed feelings about this whole thing. They're, they're, they're furious at, at uh, people like Saddam Hussein and, and, and that ilk who, who do terrible things and are, are bad people. And we're also furious at ourselves for not having the discipline to say we don't need this oil. I mean, that's what we really went to war for was this oil. It's nuts. And so all of us are very rational. We recognize all of these these inconsistencies, and you look at this war, and why, why did we do it? I, I'm really upset. Yeah. And, we're all worse down. and it completely neutralizes things. I mean, you see, at least in Vietnam, and this is this is interesting because I was a Marine. In Vietnam, there were quote real enemies, and there was a real right. situation. Now, you could understand. Less so, though, than the Second World War. Less than the Second World War. But at least in Vietnam, you could say, and you could argue logically, wait a minute, this is an independent country that we've gone in, and, and you know we have caused as much problem as we've tried to solve. And you could look at it logically uh, from a peace standpoint, and you could look at, at, at it just as logically from a war standpoint. Uh, I would argue uh, that we, in fact, could have won that war, and in fact, we're winning the war. Uh, but we we had these restraints on, and never really could could go and do the war the right way. Uh, at the same time, I could also argue, just, with just as much passion, 
that that was the wrong war at the wrong time, at the wrong place, for the wrong reason. And, and believe it, it was. But well, we there were we, sides. Yes. And, but we've yes. never resolved any of us right. how we feel about that war. And no, so but it, much more so than this one. Oh, yeah. This war, there is no... Us all I, scratching our heads. Well, there was, it was almost a manufactured war. It was a media war. Yeah. It was a great media war. I guess that's why I'm looking at this particular show as, as, as being very significant for us, for cats and dogs, for the city. I mean, because I think it's venting some of that frustration. But this is the back side, and there and are bullet holes. There are bullet holes. I think it says land of opportunity. So oh, you, there's it the whole goes, thing. Yeah, there's the whole thing. I like that. I, I thought that that had a lot of the white richness. hallway is the right place for the that. richness. I immediately when I saw that I thought of the white hallway because of the you know the depth of field that's possible. What do you think of that? Bob? I like I that. I like that. that. I like a lot too. That's a strong image. I thought so too. I probably should call Dr. Stein and I talked to Dr. Already. Did you? Yeah, what did he say? He is. What did did you tell him yes. that we've got a space for Yes, his? but he's going to have to trim it in a little, and he said that wouldn't be a problem. problem. You could do that. Well, when I went there that night um, to Cats and Dogs to just sort of scope this, this space out, uh -huh. I realized that that long white hall uh -huh. is a lot longer than I ever imagined. Yeah. And it's, it's a beautiful space. The floor is wood, and it's painted white and very high-gloss finish. Uh -huh. And uh, I think that the paneling's tiny groove and a certain point brick. Uh -huh. So you've got all these different textures, but everything's all white, though. And it's a really gorgeous yeah. space. Certain work just would really show to it. Well, uh, he is going to come probably on the Saturday to install it. Okay. okay. And I told him that if, if he wanted to, he was welcome to go up there any time during the week that he could find the building open and go up and look at the hall outside the gallery. He knows where the gallery is and okay. there before. Do tell everybody that the person I need to speak to in terms of getting in and out of the gallery will be Darlene at Cat's interest. And right. that's 6175. Right, I'll remember that. <laughs> you remember the number? Of course not. <laughs> I do not remember that. Okay. Right okay. Well, you know, Kelly, I uh, I went to uh, and I copied. I made copies of the projection on at fifty. I thought that'll take care of it. I used fifty in a blink of the eye, and I've got stacks of stuff to send out. And I went and got another fifty, and I'm not even sure if that'll be enough. That's how much work we received. And these, you know. I was pulled over the whole time. Every time I would go through another set of slides, I would be amazed. Um, one, that so many artists would have so much work already that should, you know, just shortly after the thing was over, actually, by that time it was over. And I, 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 will, I will not probably ever um, get over the fact that so many people have responses that they put into canvas so quickly, or put to film, or put to, to clay, or, or stone, or or whatever um, that quickly, and um, there were there were uh, everything from obviously uh, naive, maybe unschooled, maybe non-artists, just sort of uh, Sunday painters, um, all the way through some of the most uh, technical sculpture and multimedia constructions, uh, much of which we couldn't use because there'd be no place to to house it, and we just didn't have that kind of room.
growing up, she lived behind us. She was um, one of the Nazi youth, Miss Howard. And um, she knew of a girl who turned her parents in. I don't quite know what happened to her parents. But they were sort of asked to spy on their parents. Well, you know, this whole for war, being like I really thought that, 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 you know, this whole war, people were beginning to take on that southern yeah. I mean, that was really you know, I kept my mouth <laughs> Which well, is like, well, I, I didn't to people I knew, but people I didn't know, I just wasn't going to. I, I was very well, careful with what I said, like who I said it to. Yeah, me too. But I went out and I protested, and I uh, put a black ribbon on Oh, really? Um, um, and, um, but once the war actually became official and started, I didn't protest anymore. I wrote letters. And uh, I wrote lots of letters. And I wrote to congressmen and senators. I wrote to uh, other faculty, other institutions that I've been on. Just cut them on letter writing. Um, and I just felt like at a certain point, there was no, there was no point in going out and being in a protest that was going to end up getting smashed by some oh, war no. protesters and making mm -hmm. another little war. Right. So, yeah. I went to the uh, to the teach-in at the CCAD that we had, and uh, it was very emotional. Uh, it, was, it was really emotional. Um, a lot of kids uh, just kind of at a loss, and then there was a young man who has a brother who was over there, and um, he was, he was, uh, he finally got fed up with everybody complaining about the war and, and started to speak up, and uh, he got to the point where he was so emotional he couldn't talk, so he turned around and walked out, and um, left one little girl just standing there crying. She just couldn't, couldn't understand, you know, what was going on. She comes from a Quaker background. But that's like splitting the difference. That is true that's compromise. That's right. Huh? Good morning. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. It's actually good. What are you doing? 57? 57. I like it low too, Wallen, but. Yeah, right. Right. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Sure appreciate you guys coming back today. You guys want to help me lift this up?
How's that visually? That's visually all right. That's pretty close to that. Just a little hair off. Yeah, if you go down any more on the left, it's going to be off. The floors may not be that level. Between. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, it looks all right. The whole thing is a little bit cockeyed here and there. Now, let's get this guy here. Okay. Yeah, that's surfaces on it gives it a little more of feeling that uh, that somebody made it less industrial uh, produce yeah somebody I'd rather have it sort of look like somebody made it who was not looking for perfection you know uh, has a little more feeling that Somebody might have had a little bit of a little bit of a struggle with it, or was a person who didn't more like a common person, like a lay person, a person who didn't have maybe a whole lot of talent in the, in the area of, of painting or, for instance, welding, fabrication, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, trying to get it away from the, the, the slick industrial feeling. When did the idea of this first come about? Was it like at the beginning of the war, during the war, before it happened? Uh, it was it was during the during the war. Um, I had uh, I got a lot of uh, a lot of different ideas, and uh, uh, this was one of them that just that realized itself. Uh, Where now it might be, I don't know if it would be right for right to go back and, and make some of those other ideas or not, since since the war has been over for so long. But, um, it definitely came out of the out of the war. Did you find? It, did you find your opinions change through the war? 
Well, I think um, a little, you know, a little more satirical about the whole thing. I, I started, you know, and maybe it wouldn't be quite cool to say this, but I, I kind of felt there was a lot of, well, a sense of humor out of the war. Um, that, that it almost, almost became a carnival uh, situation. And uh, so that's why this piece evolved this way. It's, it's sort of making fun of a situation that's actually a uh, very, very serious kind of, kind of situation. I, I'm not exactly sure why this reaction happened, why I started feeling this way, but uh, all the pieces that I had in mind uh, seem to be sort of, sort of uh, humorous, or you know, sort of a bad humor or a carnival type, a carnival type situation. And this one being um, Saddam Hussein goes into the fast food business. Um, certainly doesn't seem to, uh, to be sort of a joke, you know. It's, a, but my feeling is that. He has to, they take away so many of his options and he has to have something to do to make money. So I started thinking, well, what could he do to make money? And uh, I thought, well, one dumb thing he'd do to make money would be uh, going into the sort of plastic fast food business uh, with these, uh, uh, has uh, poison gas fries, which are, made from oil, and uh, an oil burger. Um, he's got lots of oil to play with, so uh, why not just make all this, all this plastic synthetic food, which is pretty much what the fast food industry is anyway. Now, the, in the base of the piece, I, tr I tried to get a spontaneous look, to look as though the metal just happened. Uh, the idea is that Saddam Hussein has built his fast food business on the destruction of the war, and rather than even clearing it away, he just piles it on top. It's just like a, it's just a process of layering. And I wanted to get the feeling that it was just a tangled mess of metal that the explosion had caused, uh, but it's actually a lot of work to make something look spontaneous. Like the reds here, the right. reds again, and then separated by this. The right, the greens and poles, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's working. I didn't also the I didn't double. Like those against uh, the no. piece. No, see they, they washed out, they yeah. lost something. But look, double finish. Also, look what happens when you go around the corner. Mm -hmm. well, there's even some similarities here in these curves. Right. The curves in that uh, but, you know, window. Do I need to say this? Do I need to say this is all women's work? Well, of course. <laughs> How come mine is over there with women's work? Oh, that's good. <laughs>
This piece actually is part of a series of works that I'm doing right now, um, all entitled Protection. This is uh, this piece is called Bonham Feeder. Um, it relates in uh, in as much protection, I guess, as that the, uh, the American interests that we were protecting over uh, overseas were, you know, oil and and, and founded on greed, uh, oil protecting your car. I think a lot of the, the the fish imagery with its desert camo, which I also thought being natural protective environment kinds of things. Um, I think the piece is a, as a whole, you know, slowly makes my statement uh, that I really don't like the fact that uh, we had to go to war and just to protect money. This is like beef stew and accessory packet A. This is at, at number seven. This is uh, menu number nine. This is meatballs, uh, beef and rice with uh, tomato sauce. This is chicken stew. This one's chicken and rice. Corned beef hash. And uh, Spaghetti and meatballs. Mmm, that one looks good. Oh, and this is my favorite. This is my favorite. This is chicken a la king. Now, this stuff is unlike anything you've ever had before. You should see what they have in these things. I've got one packet open already. Uh, this is really easy to open. This is meals ready to eat, courtesy of the United States government. And this is what we serve to people in uh, uh, Desert Storm. This is the spoon camouflage. Now, this is strawberries. A little hard. <laughs> now, if you think these are hard, over here, we open another thing up here. And this is a cracker. Now we've decided what the cracker doubles as is a flak jacket. You get 16 of these things and nobody is going through it. I mean, this is great. The only thing stronger than the cracker is a brownie. This is a, a brownie. This thing is imperfect. I mean, you can shoot at it, explode it. You run out of ammunition. Yeah, you run out of ammunition. You throw it. I mean, you know, you can kill somebody with this. Can you fight it? Uh, I can't. I've got all caps. Uh, I mean, you give somebody with real teeth, perhaps, uh, or false ones. <laughs> that might work out. You know, you have nothing to lose. This is uh, beverage uh, base powder. And this is cocoa. This is like the beverage base powder. This is cocoa. This is grape jelly. They've got it all covered here. Now, this is really good. This is peanut butter. And here, this is salt. 
this is a little bit soft, it would just help. And they have another cracker here, and then this is the chicken a la king. Keep in mind, this is ready to eat. I mean, you can open this up, whip this out, it's soft, pliable, no label, by the way. If this, if you lose the box, this is mystery food. Well, I did my work during the time of Desert Storm was uh, going on. It, this piece was in progress for some time, and then the war occurred, and then it kind of developed further into that, the idea of the scripture of throwing away your gods which your forefathers served uh, kind of dawned on me as also being that uh, the United States and, and a lot of nations, uh, the military has become our gods also, and uh, the scripture speaks to throwing those things away that we depend on. I kind of heard about I heard about the show through Leslie Constable. I, I know her, and uh, we talked, and she uh, was familiar with this piece and invited me to, down to uh, to exhibit it. And uh, it really struck me hard because I, I kind of get perturbed and, and upset. And I don't know what the exact word would be when people start claiming uh, that uh, God was on our side and things like that. Um, and obviously, uh, I think scriptures don't promote war, although it does occur. Uh, but in fact, when we uh, try to say that our military uh, was supported by God, it seems to be a little bit of a paradox or even a contradiction, maybe. It be stronger because, uh, as far as I know, scriptures, the times that God was behind the people of Israel or, or other peoples who, he's, who he does support, it was always not by their might, uh, by their military, but by his. Uh, he frequently told them, hey, if you're going to go into battle, go with only 200 men instead of 10,000, and then by that, everyone will know that I was behind you. When we tend to think that our powers are great, I get uh, upset. I think uh, my inspiration for this piece was the lack of uh, true information that was given to us over the period of the war. I found it uh, very frustrating to deal with the facts as it was known. There were no casualties that were shown to us. Uh, in information or lack of information uh, really kind of forced the issues and made me kind of uh, re-review in my mind what it is I believed in or what, what I was taught. Do you, have you done any other political art in the past or is this uh, yes, I have. Actually, in the last couple of years, I've done other uh, pieces. Uh, one in Washington, I installed a giant dollar bill on the mall, uh, and I'm also working on other ideas. But I think that I feel like with the way um, society is going right now, they're creating these little windows of opportunity for people to force the issue. And I was interested in doing that and this piece is kind of a development of my my feeling of obligation to say something because I feel like a lot of people are not. What were your what were your personal feelings about the war? Uh, personally I was disturbed with how uh, how digestible it was to me, how I found myself becoming obsessed with watching the news and being intrigued by it and, and wanting to, to root for this this thing that I really didn't know anything about. Okay, I was watching the Persian Gulf homecoming. Um, soldiers, men and women, were coming home uh, about seven, many months ago when the war was over, and uh, it just hit me. Um, I had strong memories of being uh, the person who was waiting as the soldier came off the plane to be greeted. Um, it was my boyfriend, who is now my husband of 21 years, and I was remembering back the strong emotions that I had when he came home. And actually, I was relating to the people as they were greeting each other and, you know, the joyous feeling that they had. Um, but what also really did hit me was the um, greeting that they had was so positive, and the one that uh, my husband and other Vietnam, Vietnam war soldiers had was obviously negative and that was one of the comparisons that hit me so emotionally and I wrote down my words first um, to the poem that's on the dress and on the backdrop 
and um, then I incorporated it into the art piece later. What were your personal feelings about the war? Um, about the Persian Gulf War? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and I watched that, I watched it all on television, just like everybody else, and watched it with my husband, and I like to hear his opinions because um, he's got some strong ones, and I think we both, we both felt, and I was affected by his feelings, that it was necessary at the time. We followed it optimistically, and um, I think we felt supportive, even, even after all the time, uh, the generation ago, when we were so troubled by the war and struggling so much on an intimate level, um, I think we were more positive about this war. And now, though, looking back, um, my feelings aren't as supportive as they were when it was going on. I think it's just fallen into the war category. This is a piece I did about years ago, right after the war began over there, so it's kind of a piece trying to, you know, talking about the illusion between the power, violence, and the peace, and the balance, so on. And uh, at that time, like everybody else, you know, we experienced something very emotionally, very strongly, you know, about the war and so on. So that's about it. This painting, I titled it Kiss Those Missiles Goodbye, and it's about women in war. My, at the time, I did, I did this a year ago, uh, January of 91, and I was listening to all the news broadcasts, and it was, it was devastating, so I wanted to contribute somehow, and I'm a painter, and I don't usually do such serious imagery, but this one pretty much moved me, so. What were your own political reactions to the war? How did you feel about it personally? Personally, I think that if there were more women involved, that there wouldn't be as much chaos in the world. Well, it was just straightforwardly a reaction to the events of the war and, above all, the control of the government in promoting that war. Personally, I'm against any form of war. Uh, I feel that there should be only at the deepest level a total commitment to peace at any cost at this point. My name is Helen Hoffelt. I'm an artist. My medium is photography, although I do other things. What this image is about is it is a, a chessboard. And the reason I made a chessboard is because I, last year when the war was going on, we were bombarded with, um, with media images that that really stripped away, in my opinion, what war was about, which was the, um, which is murder. And so, um, at that time, I took pictures of the media images and set it up in chess pieces where they represent what the rooks are, what the kings are, President Bush and Saddam Hussein are in the king positions and the knights are in the knight, I mean, the, the generals are in the knight positions and the, the land is in the rook position and it was at the beginning of the war. So this is a, a, a very early chess move. My name is Charles Wentz. I'm an artist in Columbus. And I normally, uh, this is my work behind me here, I normally stay away from artwork that's uh, can be easily categorized as social, political type subject because a lot of artists, you know, they jump on a bandwagon. It's like the knee-jerk liberal type, of, you know, stereotype of, of an artist. But uh, and I stayed away from political work for years. I did a few in '84, uh, which the other piece of mine is is from '84, '85. But um, but with Desert Storm, that that. Um, you know, I had been making paintings of just uh, uh, my own, based on my own personal quirks and hang-ups and self-obsessions, but, but with Desert Storm, that really, uh, that brought it back home, and, and I really felt uh, inspired to do this painting. What was and this painting is called uh, The Rape and Village of a Primitive Society and Subsequent Yard Sale.
What were your own um, personal feelings about the war? I, I was I was surprised when it happened. I, I thought it was just going to be uh, quite a few threats and flexing of muscle. And then actually when I saw the bombs on uh, TV, that, that was brought it home as much as, as I, I, I can stand it. <laughs> I remember my friend stopped over for a beer, uh, Paul Volker, and he was going to speak uh, uh, at an anti-war demonstration. He was going to give this speech, you know, and he was planning to go go there within a uh, half hour of stopping by my place. And when he stopped by, the war started, you know. And he's up there watching the television, and we, he didn't, I, I don't think he remembered about his speech or anything. He just went, you know, down my kitchen and started getting the beers and, and just got plastered in front of the TV and we got bombed. <laughs> yeah, I know, no fun. My name is Charles Miller. I'm from Northampton, Massachusetts, and uh, I'm really proud to be in this show. What was the uh, inspiration for your pieces here? Uh, the inspiration for my pieces was George Bush. As I began to watch this nightmare unravel on, on television, I uh, felt like millions of people, I just began to agonizing over these innocent civilians who were being slaughtered, these uh, people. And when George uh, encouraged all these people to go out and take on Saddam Hussein and run them out of town, as the saying goes, like in a two-bed western, and they tried, and they went out against this mechanized technological giant uh, with uh, AK-47s and rocket launchers he hold on his shoulders. I felt it was like like they were going at it with sticks. And uh, that's what I sort of tried to imply there. And then the uh, all the people up in the hills, I began to see more and more of them as, as the very young, beautifully dressed, very healthy. They weren't half-starved, uh, half-dead Biafrans, but people very vital and alive. And uh, I started to get more and more outraged. And then when George Bush went fishing, it really pissed me off to the point where I, I just felt that uh, this is the result. I did about uh, 18 of these ca ca canvases, uh, more or less within, it just flowed out. And I used the sand because that's what they were being buried in, the mud, and uh, they were just the uh, basic rudiments of what it took to express how I felt is what I used. I put a lot of technique aside, but basically, technically, they're very sound, but we don't want to get into that crap. But I mean, the, the, there's a very spontaneous and emotional outpouring of, of one artist's reaction to this stinking goddamn war. Well, it's a long story, really, of the whole development of uh, one's awareness of art and of the political realities of the United States. And to me, when the Gulf War came on, I totally opposed it because even though uh, Saddam Hussein had violated international law, so had George Bush in Panama and Ronald Reagan in Grenada, and there was no invasion of the United States, plus Israel violates international law with regularity, and there's no American-supported invasion of Israel. So clearly we're dealing with something other than international law. And uh, basically it was killing for money. And uh, that is, it was a capitalist war. I am not a communist or any type of, I hate it, any type of totalitarianism, and that is also why I really opposed the war, because the television medium successfully hid the realities of the killing from the American people. And this piece that I've done here is trying to show who's responsible for the crimes. And the crimes were perhaps 150,000 deaths, all who were killed violently. Both these men are responsible. He, these people are both mass murderers. And they're legal because they're heads of state. They will not be. Well, they talked about putting Saddam Hussein on a war crimes trial. But, you know, you remember in the Vietnam War, Bertrand Russell tried to, he actually put uh, Nixon on a war crimes trial. And the American media laughed, ha ha, how stupid. But really, if we take ideas seriously and we inform ourselves as best we can, at least myself, these are the types of conclusions I've come to. And down here we have the same type of theme. And basically what I've said is that what they have produced is death. And up here we have a horrible atrocity. I hate to look at this picture, actually. But 
really, what the reason I did it is because the American television media, which are effectively controlling the American mind at this point, do not show the reality of what happened there. And this is an ugly indication of what really did happen there. And uh, to get on my soapbox, my final point is democracy and freedom of speech in the United States are more threatened than most people realize. The next war, it's very possible that things like this will actually be suppressed. Uh, the inspiration for the piece is making objects that are going to somehow communicate what it is that I put into them and create the dialogue between the actual artwork and the viewer viewing it. Depending on the background of the different many viewers and myself, uh, the artwork is always going to take a different uh, stand somehow, and it's always going to have a different meaning. And it's very important with the motivation to create the dialogue first so that it will have its own speaking uh, mind, in a sense. And the motivation for the particular piece here is the idea of what it is that actually is going on here. I have a very, uh, very, you know, people know what this symbol is. It's a, uh, a missile or bomb casing uh, or piece of ordnance, and uh, it's a facsimile of one, and it, there's a coffin, so the ideas of very familiar objects, uh, putting them in a way to to be a catalyst for something else. Uh, pretty much, it's that's the motivation is to spark uh, the viewers' ideas and viewers' reaction, whether it be positive or negative, good or bad, uh, legal or illegal, uh, and, and that's what the motivation and intentions are for the piece. What were your um? What were your own personal feelings about the war? Uh, my own personal feelings for the war were pretty much uh, that of a hypocrite, that nobody that I know uh, likes war. I don't think anybody does. But the background that I have, a very conservative background, and the family that I grew up in taught me to respect the military in a sense that it may not be my choice to be in the service, but I'm not going to turn my back on the people who have made their choice to uh, be in the military. Uh, so I don't, I don't put any kind of a blame on anything, especially with the people who are doing the actual fighting while I'm back here in the states, spouting my mouth off for what's happened in the, you know, in the past and what's in the future. So I. I'm a hypocrite in that point where you know, I don't agree with the war, but somebody's doing it. and It's my responsibility here to take care of the problems that need to be addressed while that's going on and make it uh, preventable the next time. I'm, uh, I'm uh, very pleased that, um, in fact, we live in a country where we can still do this kind of mm -hmm. show. And I think that if nothing else, um, ever is, is uh, to come out of a show like that, whether or not somebody had an aesthetic moment or not, um, which is a little hard to define anyway. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I have them all the time. Shopping waters. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the idea that, um, that I or anyone else can make a painting about something that maybe we feel we're being um, asked not to talk about and yet can still put it out there in the public domain and invite people to come look up at it and not end up in a prison uh, somewhere uh, is still uh, something to celebrate.